All right, guys. So, right, the moment that you guys have been waiting for, right, the solution or the answers to the 2023 POA um, paper two, right? So let's get right into it. I want you to like, subscribe, and share. Right, share with your friends. And um, we are going to be talking about question one. So over the coming days, I'll be doing, you know, a question, right? I've already done all the questions, but I'll be sharing, right, the answers to the various questions over the coming days, right? So you want to stay tuned for that, share with your friends, and, and, and let's get this thing done, all right? So question one of the accounts paper, right? It asks you to identify one accounting software program right, that Yahim can use to help improve the business. Now, I must say that this question was a surprise to me. It really was, right? Um, the first thing that jumped out at me when I saw the question was QuickBooks, because I'm more familiar with QuickBooks, and Peachtree, right? Um, Excel can also be used, and Sage can also be used. So if you had any one of these, then it would it would be correct, all right? And then you have this one, the second question, um, 1A2, it says identify one skill a bookkeeper should possess, right? Bookkeeper must be detailed and good at recording information. Then 1B, we are given a table, right, that shows transactions that were omitted from the books. The word omitted means left out, right? So if these transactions were left out of the books, then it means that we, we would be required to input them in the books. All right, so let's look at the first part of 1B. It says that we should use the journal to record the information on the table that we just saw. All right, so let's look at the first, the first transaction on April 2, bought goods and credit costing $400 from our true. If you're buying goods and credit, the two accounts that we need, right, we need the purchases account and we need the name of the creditor, right, which is our true. Remember that the purchases account is always debited. So you would debit the purchases, credit R2, and pay attention to my folio. All right? Yeah. Next one, April 8th, sold goods valued at $600 to cre uh, on credit to you, Moon. Right? And if we are selling goods on credit, it's really the reverse of April 2. So we are talking about the sales account, which is always credited. And you know, I, I use those little tips to help my students, always credited. And so if we credit the sales account, then we would have to debit um, the debtor's account, which is U Moon, right? So there you go. U Moon is debited, sales is credited, right? Then you have April 12, right? You return some goods to U Moon for $50. That is sales return. Sales return, um, sorry, U Moon return goods to us right um so that would be sales return sales return is always debited i would credit you moon's account april 18 right you receive an invoice from bvic for goods worth four thousand dollars less a trade discount of 33 and a third percent now you have to remember that trade discounts are not recorded in the books they are only on the invoice right yeah so it is not actually four thousand dollars we would pay we would pay less we would pay um 33 and a third percent of the four thousand dollars less which would work out to be 2667 after we take out the discount april 19 good return to elson right so that would be um purchases returns right and these goods have been invoiced at 120 less a trade discount of 20 percent right so we actually didn't get the goods for 120 we got it for less than 120 right and that is the reason why they told us about the 20 percent trade discount so when we worked that out right and we subtract the discount we would have ended up got um getting those goods for 96 dollars all right so that was an easy five marks guys this is simple double entry type of thing and they say identify the source document that was issued for the, the transaction on the 19th of April, 2022. So let's look at what the 19th of April says. We just read it, goods return to El Song, right? Um, and so they're asking now, what is the name of the source document? That would be a debit note, right? Always remember, returns inwards, credit note, returns outwards, debit note, all right? Remember that. Then we move on to 1C. So, so far, you know, guys, this is, this is simple stuff, you know, right? We gone. How many marks now? So this is what one, two, 
and then this is five, seven, eight. So we got eight marks. You almost passed the question. All right. So one C now. It says the following information is available for three of the employees of Yahim Printing Services. Employee um, one is Leela. And guys, I told you know that this was a surprise to me as well. They don't normally group um um payroll um with you know double entry or books of original entry that did, you know that doesn't normally happen right so, and, and payroll coming this early in the paper was a shocker for me as well so i know it must have caught some of you guys off guard right but let's look at it it's really not difficult you know the question is not difficult so let's look at it Leela's annual salary was agreed at what eighty-four thousand dollars for the year ended April twenty April twenty twenty-three. Yahim agreed to give her a two percent pay rise pay raise sorry on her annual salary for the new financial year ending the thirtieth of April twenty twenty-four. So they are asking you to calculate Leela's um monthly gross earnings for the new financial year, right? Which is the thirtieth of April twenty twenty-four. Right. So first and foremost, we need to find out what that two percent period is. So we find two percent of the eighty four thousand, which would have been um, her agreed salary. So that two percent work out to be one thousand six hundred and eighty right here. Right. So our new pay salary. Right. For the year. The new pay salary for the year would be this increase one thousand six hundred and eighty plus the eighty four thousand, which would give us eighty five thousand six hundred and eighty, which is the new salary per annum. And if you want to find our monthly salary, because that's what they ask us, our monthly salary, we have to know divide it by twelve, and we would get the seven thousand one hundred and forty. All right. So that was an easy three marks now. True be told, wasn't difficult. All right, next one now for Samson. So Samson is paid thirty dollars per hour. And Yahim has contracted him to work 35 hours per week. That's very inf that's very um important information, right? For the for the week ending the 30th of April 2023, he worked 49 hours, and overtime is paid at a time and a quarter. So we are to calculate Samson's gross wage for the week, the 30th of April 2023. So first things first, we have to calculate his normal um hourly rate, right? We get that by multiplying is pay rate, which is the $30 right here, and the normal working hours, which is 35, we get 1,050. So that is what he should earn a week. Then now we have to calculate the overtime rate. So they said that he is paid overtime at a time and a quarter, which is 1.25. So we multiply that by his hourly rate, which is 30, and we get 37.5. So every hour that he works overtime at 37.5, dollars he is paid or thirty seven dollars fifty cent he is paid so the overtime hours we need to calculate that he worked 14 hours overtime and we we got that by subtracting the 35 from the 49 hours and then now we want to calculate his overtime pay which is the 37 dollars 50 multiplied by the 14 hours that he have, would have worked overtime and we get 525 so then if you want to find his gross wage all we have to do now is to add the normal pay to the overtime pay, which is the $1,050 plus the $525, and we would have gotten the $1,575, which would have been his gross wage for the week. Four marks. Well, I must admit that this, it takes a little more calculation. It's four marks, right? But, um, you know, this is a, a normal payroll question. So it's not out of the box. It, it doesn't require any great critical thinking, right? If you if you understand how to do payroll, then you should you should be able to be doing this, all right. And then um, the last one now, the last employee, Dolly, right? Now Dolly earns a basic salary of three thousand four hundred dollars per month, and in addition, she is paid a, a commission of um, two percent of the amount by which the revenue of the business exceeds forty thousand dollars per month. Listen to me, guys. This part here is very important. Right, so she is paid a commission, right, of what? 2% of the amount by which the revenue of the business exceeds $40,000 per month, right? And then listen to what they tell us now. They tell us that the revenue exceeded it, it, it was 58000 So these are important information. They ask us to calculate her, her gross pay, right? So then, 
let's look what the commission is, the commission amount is. So commission is 2%, that's the rate, and she is paid commission on how much it exceeds $40,000. Sales exceed $40,000. So if you subtract 40 from the 58, you get 18,000. Right, so for 40, um, 58,000 minus 40,000, you get 18,000, right? And then you find 2% of that, you get $36. Not 36, sorry, it's supposed to be 360. My bad, guys, my bad. It's supposed to be 360, right? So then the gross pay then would equal to what? The gross pay would equal to the normal pay, pay sorry, plus commission. So the normal pay is what? 3,400, they gave us that. Plus what? The commission, which is 360, right? I don't like how that look like 36, you know? Right? Well, it is 36, but I need to change it. I need to insert some, some shape or something to let, let you guys see, um, understand that this is supposed to be 360. <laughs> All right. They don't know if that will make a difference, but, you know? Yes, yeah, so this is supposed to be 360, right? Yes, 360. So you get 3,760. All right. So yeah. All right. So there you have it, guys. All right. And then the last question to run it off. State two types of compulsory deductions that are normally deducted from employees' gross pay. Every time a question on payroll comes, these quest this, this this question comes. Easy two marks. So you have income tax, you have education tax, and NIS. All right. So any two of these would be correct. All right. So there you have it. That was question one, right? Um, let me know how you did in the comments, right? Let me know if you got these answers. And um, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow about this time, you will. I will post the answers for question two. Question two, right? For those who may not know, question two consists of a consists of a cash book question, right? And yeah, already did it, right? But tomorrow, we'll talk about that. Have a good evening. All good.